Procurement professionals have used emails and spreadsheets ever since they were invented. Even today, those professionals continue to use these tools while facing challenges with managing data. In 2010, Market Dojo was founded and created an easier way for buyers to negotiate with suppliers by creating an easy to use on demand platform. In early 2022, Esker and Market Dojo became official partners, strengthening each other's presence in the financial world. I'm Scott Leahy, and this is Esker on Air. Today, I'd like to welcome Nick Drew, COO and co founder of Market Dojo, who is here to talk about what offerings Market Dojo has that might interest Esker customers. Uh, so, Nick, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Scott. Pleasure to be here. So, was it always a part of your career plan to start an e-sourcing company? Uh, where did the idea of Market Dojo come from? Weirdly enough, one of the reasons of setting up Market Dojo was to go play more golf. I used to do it quite a lot in my previous gig in consulting. You know, we'd, we'd, you, know you do your client engagement and then you'd be like, brilliant, I've got the afternoon off now. Go hop on the golf course. And uh, myself and Alan, who's my other co-founder, like we would... We would just go hang out on the golf course, play around, chat about business, ideas, what we would do. And that's kind of really where like the Market Dojo idea got came together. And we were like, oh, it wouldn't be great having your own business. We could like, we could just do this every week. Like every board meeting, we just we just go out on the golf course, a different course around the country, even around Europe, even around the world, and just like play golf. Uh, and then, you know, it turns out that actually 12 years in of doing this, we've played golf twice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's completely gone the other way uh on the career path i, I think honestly uh no no it, it definitely wasn't um i mean i i somehow uh, landed myself a, a job in procurement consulting um soon after graduating from university um so i was heavily involved in all, all the world of uh, cost reduction category management you know risk uh, mitigation and supply chain um, and it was during those days in consulting that I, I got exposed to the world of, you know, strategic sourcing. Uh, I used to run strategic sourcing projects on behalf of companies. Um, and really, I, I kind of thought, yeah, there's, there's got to be a better way of, of helping businesses do this themselves than, than making them, you know, pay expensive consulting fees uh, and get other people to do it for them. Um, and that's really what, what gave us the idea for Market Dojo, just, just a, a tool to help commoditize that strategic sourcing process uh, just through some really simple, effective and accessible technology um, and then just take that out to the wider market really is, is what gave us the idea. Um, and it was interesting, you know, our first client that we signed up as Market Dojo uh, back in 2010, uh, it was a mid-market manufacturing firm. And, uh, you know, they, they ran their first strategic sourcing project with us. Um, and that, that first project, it paid for their annual subscription for our technology right within that first five days of using the tool. Uh, so really, that it just proved that there's a great success to be had for clients out there um, and, and on we went. Well, we live in a world where things are changing faster than ever. How, if at all, would you say the procurement has changed in the last couple of years? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a big question. I, I suppose almost a podcast in its own right, I think. Um, so I think for me, it, it's interesting. I, I was reading the uh, the Deloitte CPO a survey the other day which was concluded late 2021 where you know they interview 400 or so cpos and cfos around the world and it's interesting to see that the cost you know cost reduction cost management was still up there and in, in the top two or three priorities for procurement um, you know historically it's always been at the top uh, and I, th I would have thought that with all the kind of supply chain disruption we've had over the years that that might have changed the agenda a little bit um, but it seems cost is still there, um, and, and particularly in today's market, there's, there's a lot of inflation happening, you know, energy and uh, and fuel and so on. Um, so I, I think that's something that stayed consistent, uh, along with the whole sort of digital transformation, which was another uh, sort of uh, agenda on the procurement desk. But in terms of things that have changed, I think I've seen ESG has certainly become uh, more important to procurement, um, even getting down into the details of looking at things like mapping out your carbon footprint amongst your supply base, which, you know, historically, that's been a very, very challenging 
activity to undertake, but it looks like procurement are making some really great progress uh, on that uh, and, and keeping a closer eye of, of carbon emissions and, and uh, you know, that carbon consumption across their supply chain. Uh, I think also risk, supply chain risk uh, has, has greatly become the focus of procurement in the last few years. I mean, just look at our last couple of years, right? We've had right, in the UK, Brexit, we've had COVID, of course, worldwide. More recently, we're looking at sanctions imposed on, on Russian companies. You know, all of these, these changes in their own right are, are creating challenges for procurement to try and keep on top of. You know, that's finding continuous supply, which is is challenging. You know, things like semiconductors, uh, you've know, seen in the automotive industry that that's caused big disruption. You know, supply cannot keep up with demand uh, and procurement have got to try and fix that because now that isn't just affecting cost and bottom line of a business. This is affecting top line. So I think that is becoming incredibly important uh, to, to bring procurement into that picture uh, and, and help businesses grow uh, let alone manage cost. Uh, I think things like cyber security is becoming a, a big factor for procurement as well. Um, there were some cases not long ago with with Apple, with uh, one of their key suppliers, you know, they got hacked and very confidential drawings and designs were, were exposed. Um, you know, this is again a, a topic that procurement need to stay on top of. And just more broadly, the performance of suppliers. Um, there's some, some great technology now that helps manage supplier performance. Um, and, and this is something that, again, is becoming a, a big piece of the agenda for, for procurement to stay on top of. Um, and lastly, I, I would say that automation is another um, big aspect that is changing for procurement. Um, I think procurement generally, we're, we're a function that's fairly consistently under-resourced, uh, you know, being asked to do a lot with not much resource, uh, not much budget relative to the to the business. Um, and so we've got to figure out ways of doing more with less. Uh, and automation technology has a huge role to play in this. Well, you mentioned figuring out ways to do more with less. What does Market Dojo offer to help and, and what makes it different? Um, so we develop strategic procurement tools uh, covering areas like sourcing, but uh, that includes reverse auctions as well, and supply management and contract management. Um, but really what makes us different in, in all of that is that we just really try and make it simple, um, which in itself is actually really difficult. Um, but that kind of means things like putting our pricing online to make it very clear to our clients what exactly our solutions cost and what they'll get back for it. Uh, we go as far as making the solutions self sign up. So if you just went to our website, you could actually create a user account and jump straight in and start using our, our tools. You know, it's as simple as, for example, signing up to a LinkedIn uh, account. But we also try and make the, the user experience as clean and easy as possible. Um, so to just, you know, handhold people as they go through using the tools so they get it right first time. And the last thing that we do that really sets us apart from, from everybody else on the market is that we allow uh, users to go pay as you go, you know, a bit like a sort of Netflix subscription um, in that if you want to run one single RFP in Market Dojo, you can do that. It's $775. You can jump in, build your RFP, invite your suppliers and put the whole thing live maybe within a couple of hours. Um, maybe a couple of days at, at best if you've got other information to gather. And that really makes us very unique. You said earlier uh, that cost is always top of mind for procurement. Uh, how can Market Dojo help companies lower cost? Yeah, I mean, great question. Obviously, a very pressing question in, in the environment we, we all live in today. Um, there are a number of ways, really. Uh, first thing is, is we can help procurement teams just be more efficient at what they do you know so if we take sourcing for example we can just help procurement teams run more projects run more sourcing projects because the tool itself 
allows the RFP to be done a bit quicker, a bit easier, more effectively than, say, emailing around PDF and Word files to loads of suppliers and getting all these queries coming into your inbox and trying to deal with them and field them and then loop your colleagues and stakeholders in to answer these queries. And the whole thing becomes a bit of a, an unmanageable mess. Um, so by just streamlining that whole process online through a, through a tool like ours, it just means you, you, you can, first of all, uh, you do the projects with fewer resources. So that's one way of saving money just by being more efficient with your time. Uh, but equally, it can let you do more projects. You know, if you're freeing up time on any individual project, then that means you're going to have the bandwidth to do more uh, RFPs in a year and therefore demonstrate more of your value back to your organization. Um, but one real key one, though, is since the process can be more streamlined by being online and with the tool to help guide you through it, you can involve more suppliers in the process, the RFP process. And if you do that, you get greater competition. And if you get greater competition with your proposals, you will find a better uh, solution and a, quite possibly a more affordable solution on the market. Um, I think it was uh, the global shipping firm, uh, Maersk, who discovered uh, from their results that for every additional supplier that they involved in an RFP process, their overall outcome was a 1% greater saving per supplier. So I, I think that worked up until about nine suppliers. Beyond nine suppliers, you kind of hit hit a ceiling. But if you think if you're only involving a couple of suppliers today in your RFP process because it takes too much time and effort to go to more, well, if you could, could streamline that process and go to six or seven suppliers, you could get you know double the uh, the savings outcome as a result. So it's quite a compelling way to to save cost there. But then the last aspect to it is uh, you know I, I I mentioned there auctions that we do reverse auctions uh, or help clients run reverse auctions. So reverse auctions can be a very effective way at discovering the market price for uh, whatever goods or services you're you're tendering. Um, if we look at Google, for example. Um, their, their center of excellence team uh, announced a few years ago that um, by taking an RFP through to a reverse auction, they saved an, an additional 4% um, compared to that the best bid they had in the RFP, um, which is quite astonishing. And, and Maersk, again, go back to them, they, they had a similar result. They found that they saved an additional 3% from their RFP, taking that through to an auction. So I kind of ask, ask our, our audience the question themselves. You know, if, if you, uh, on your next RFP, if you could just think, if you could save an extra three, four percent on that RFP, what does that mean to you in terms of hard dollars uh, savings? Um, because that is genuinely what uh, other companies have seen from their results. Yeah, and, and real quick, you've mentioned a reverse auction a couple times today. So for those listeners who might not know, could you explain exactly what that is? Yeah, sure. So a, an e-auction is simply, simply where you get suppliers to compete against each other online. Um, so uh, take your RFP process, you know, you're getting suppliers to give you a proposal. Uh, E-sourcing, you're taking those proposals and running the whole thing online. Uh, and then the auction is just the, the negotiation bit that happens afterwards. Um, so suppliers at the start of the auction, for example, would see what position they're in competitively relative to the other suppliers in the room. Uh, so, you know, supplier would see themselves saying in third place for, you know, their, this service that they're bidding for. Uh, and they would have the ability uh, to improve their offer um, and try and improve their, their standing. Um, so they might take, you know, one or two percent off their bid and their rank might say, right, you're now the second best offer we've got. So they might take another one percent off their bid and the tool will say, great, you're now sitting in first place. Um, and the supplier would then hope that that's how it finishes. But ultimately, maybe another supplier in, in, in the auction would, would compete with them. So it's just a very efficient way for both buyers and suppliers to negotiate you know it saves all that hassle of back and forth over the telephone or by email exchange or you know multiple online meetings where you kind of go back and forth over the pricing 
um, and instead it's just it's half an hour is is typical the length of the auction where the suppliers just you know intensely negotiate with each other try and secure the top spot and then it's done and then the, the buyer and the supplier can start to focus more on the contract side of the discussion knowing that the price negotiation is is over yeah so we delved into you know the the time and effort savings the actual um you know financial savings knowing all that when would you say is the right time uh for for someone to consider an e-sourcing solution or maybe replace the the existing solution yeah so you've just mentioned two two different scenarios there and 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 so let's address those so the first one is if you perhaps don't have a solution in place today and you're 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 still going around a, a manual rfp process or you know it could be an rfq just getting quotes or, or or just getting information from your suppliers if you're still emailing out spreadsheets you're emailing out pdf documents and word files and all sorts of attachments um then you know that's ultimately the the time that you should be thinking could we do this better um you know procurement as a function as a department we're here to lead by example we should not you know no longer be in the position where we don't have tools to help us deliver the results so ultimately that is that is a major trigger for for when is the right time to look at e-sourcing if you're still doing things manually but but you also mentioned there scott um you know, what if uh, you're using a legacy tool, you know, so a solution already um, that, that you're doing e-sourcing with? Um, ultimately, you, you can just ask yourself the question, you know, is it working? Do you have good user uptake, good adoption, good throughput uh, in that tool? Uh, is it, get, are you getting feedback from the teams that maybe it's a bit cumbersome, a bit slow, a bit complicated, and therefore they're not putting the team aren't putting as many tenders rfps through the tool as they should do and if that's the case then is also the time to be thinking about maybe a better solution um, you know ultimately we're here in the 21st century there are tools that are much newer much quicker much simpler and much more effective uh, at doing things like running sourcing events um, than perhaps some uh, in the 20th century that we left behind. Uh, so that that's another a consideration there. And so for the folks listening here, if they're thinking ab about possibly, you know, implementing uh, any of these these solutions, uh, you know, what steps would you recommend that they take? How should they get that ball rolling? Yes. Yeah, so I mean. The first thing to do is obviously you've got a starting point of where you are today. You know, as I say, if it's that manual process, um, then that's a bit easier to start jumping into thinking about using a tool. Um, I'll come on to that in a second, uh, how we can help there. Um, if you're using a an existing solution that perhaps is a bit more complicated, if you've got, you know, uh, sort of data that you need to, to think about uh, migrating uh, or anything like that and existing templates. So there's a bit more work involved to sort of map your current process across. But let's just focus on, let's say you're doing manual work, uh, a manual process today. We, we just make it really straightforward to get started. Um, you know, if, if you recall from the beginning, I, I said we, one of our unique aspects is that we let clients use the tool pay as you go you know, on demand, one RFP at a time. And so all I ask really is that um, the next time you have a, an RFP, uh, or it could be an RFI, an RFQ, as I mentioned, um, then just think of Market Dojo. You know, that one RFP, you can do that in our tool and start to see whether or not it's adding value immediately. Uh, as I say, it's $775 to, to just do an RFP in the tool. Um, and so if we, we look at a client uh, like Logitech, you know, the, the IT uh, sort of hardware company, that's exactly what they did. You know, they, they, they had a, a particular RFP that they wanted to run and uh, they, they thought, well, look, for this particular one, let's, let's try an online tool and, and see how that works out. And they, they ran it on our tool. And by the time they finished that RFP, they, they were thinking, wow, this is so much easier. This is so much quicker than, than this manual process we had before um, and so they they you know quite happily invested in a more thorough rollout across other members of the team so we're obviously talking uh, because of the recent partnership between esker and market dojo uh, how were you introduced to esker the first time i had the name esker it would have been a bit of web research in around mid 21 
it was a, a strategic maneuver by by ourselves to think, okay, we need to find a, a robust partner in the space that doesn't compete with what we do, um, that we can collaborate with to try and defend that territory uh, and bring that additional value to our client base as well. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I just tapped up Google. Um, Eska came up nice and high and I uh, reached out to partnerships, the alliances team. Um, and, and one thing led to another until uh, it became quite a strategic high-level conversation. Got to meet a lot of great people uh, high up the ranks at ESCA until sort of finally the penny dropped about, ah, okay, now this is this is a, a slightly uh, more strategic conversation. I think, you know, ESCA is interesting, you know, it's similar similar culture to ourselves. You know, I, I it's the kind of organization that, that does things properly, but but wants to do things gradually the right way. Uh, you know, uh, what's the expression, like want to walk before you try and run kind of thing. And that's always been Market Dojo's approach as well, that sort of calculated risks of getting into new territories, new products. Uh, we've always wanted to be relatively sustainable in what we're doing. And I think Esker are, are pretty similar in that attitude. And so there was there was that really good fit from the beginning, uh, as well as then, of course, you know, the product fit was, was great. Very little overlap in what we do, a lot of, a lot of uh, complementary offerings. And now for any uh, Esker customers listening, what does this partnership mean for them? Yeah, it's a very exciting news. And, and to be honest, all of us at Market Dojo and, uh, and, and Esker combined are, are really excited by, by this prospect and, and what we're creating together. Um, so I know, you know, Esker, you guys are emerging leader in, in the whole sort of transactional procurement. Um, you know, the, as you call it, the downstream procurement of, uh, of you know, raising uh, requisitions and purchase orders and, and invoicing and so on. Um, whilst we, Market Dojo, we have a very strong pedigree in the strategic uh, side of procurement, you know, the upstream procurement, things like sourcing and, and supplier management. And so this, this acquisition, what's really exciting about it is it, it helps unify both of our skill sets to give a, a sort of end-to-end um, sort of solution from from upstream da- to downstream. Um, so that's that's what one thing that's really exciting. And you know we have a lot of uh, subject matter expertise in strategic procurement. Um, and I didn't mention it, but you know as part of any licensing engagement with Market Dojo, you you get access to our team. Uh, and and you know this is a team that know how to run RFPs. They know how to how to deliver strategic procurement results. Um, so that's a, it's a big um, tick in the box that, that our clients like to get from us. Um, but the other thing is, you know, just, just to sort of illustrate that expertise, I mean, we, we've just been shortlisted for a, a second time, a second year in a row for the, uh, the World Procurement Awards, um, which is hosted by procurement leaders. And we genuinely hope to create similar success uh, for all of ESCA's clients as well. And thinking uh, post partnership now, what are the broader suite of tools available? Yeah, so I mean, regarding Market Dojo, we we, we uh, sourcing is our flagship product. Absolutely, um, most of our clients either started on sourcing or or are using sourcing, um, especially given the the sort of pay as you go. Uh, nature of it that you can just you know give your next RFP a try and and see how it goes. Um, but aside from that, there are some other uh, interesting tools that that we can offer. Um, the next one that, that that clients would find interest in would be uh, our Sim Dojo solution, which uh, is short for Supplier Information Management, um, which is you know a supplier onboarding tool. Um, but again, leading to Market Dojo's qualities. This isn't a transactional onboarding tool of just getting bank details and that kind of thing, but more of a strategic su- supplier management tool. Um, so it it helps procurement teams do more of that qualitative evaluation of your suppliers. Um, for example, you know the the financial uh, performance, the ESG uh, performance, which is obviously a big big thing today. Um, the diversity metrics, you know, uh, getting into risk management with your suppliers as well. So, you know, looking at things like cybersecurity and operational risk, reputational risk, this kind of stuff. So just just sort of moving the goalposts a little bit on what is supplier onboarding from being a tedious 
transactional process to just onboard a new supplier to being something quite important and, and, and crucial to you know board level about how well you truly understand your suppliers and and where you as an organization might have some risks uh, within your supply base that you didn't necessarily know about. Um, and in classic market dojo style, you know, this sim dojo tool that does all that starts at $7,750, you know, self sign up and on you go. So again, just trying to keep that whole process really simple. And then the, the last tool that could potentially be of interest to, to you know, ESCA uh, clientele is uh, around contract management. Um, so we have a, a really nice, easy contract repository tool just for helping clients capture key information on their contracts um, and manage alerts for things like expiries and rebates and quarterly reviews uh, and that kind of thing, which, again, it's self-service, self-sign up, starts at $1,500 a year. So a very sort of quick, easy way to just you know elevate a little bit of the uh, performance of the procurement team in front of you know, all your, all those valuable stakeholders and, and the business. Now, obviously, uh, you're an e-sourcing company. What would you say to companies still using emails and spreadsheets within their procurement? <laughs> I, I, th I think my short answer is uh, you don't have to. You can do better. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if I if I expand on that, I, I mean, I think you know we all. In procurement understand the shortcomings of, of using email and, and spreadsheets to do our job you know it, it's that lack of audit uh, very hard to see how people reached a particular decision what information was shared you know what's going on across your your function let alone the business it it's, creates really bad collaboration amongst teams you know emailing your colleagues spreadsheets and getting them to populate information there and emailing your suppliers these spreadsheets it's very hard to work together on the same uh, information flow um, and just generally it, it it makes us as procurement as a function just come across as as less professional you know we we whether that's in front of your suppliers you know running tenders hey here's a spreadsheet to fill out here's a word document to fill out whether that's with your peers um but also your stakeholders you know we're, we're here in procurement we're engaging with it with marketing with engineering operations and we're trying to knock on their doors and tell them that we can help them out and and, and bring professionalism to the procurement process uh, and when you then kickstart that process by uh putting together a spreadsheet and a pdf document uh, to run a tender uh, i think our, our stakeholders might look at us a little bit and say well hold on a sec that's kind of what i was doing already what, what, what are you bringing to the table here um whereas you know you look i think i made this point before but you look in in other functions like sales you know they bring forward a crm tool like salesforce and it all looks slick and it's got everything in one place it's very easy to collaborate very easy to report you can create some fantastic dashboards that communicate the effectiveness of the sales function and yet in procurement, you know, we, we're, we're pretty bad at just having the same kind of uh, impact regarding technology, you know, where we can showcase to our stakeholders around the business. This is what we're up to. This is the impact we're having to the business. Here, have a look at our end-to-end -end reporting. These are the KPIs that we are measured against, and this is how we're uh, doing and performing against them. You know, these are the savings we've brought to our organization. These are the budgetary improvements we've brought to you. If you're doing it with emails and spreadsheets, it it you fail in that regard. Um, and really, there are some great tools out there that are affordable, you know, self-service. They're very simple to get up and running. So you kind of have to ask yourself the question a little bit of why? why? Why are you still using emails and spreadsheets? What's holding you back from professionalizing the work that you do? Um, these tools, they, they resolve all of those challenges. Um, and and a lot more, and, and they bring a lot more to the table. So ultimately, I just say to to people in procurement, just just try them out, you know, um, and then you can see for yourselves. Yeah, well, if if, if I'm a, a listener and my my interest is peaked, uh, what would you say I should be doing next if 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 I want to know more? Yeah, I mean, I, I I hope there's something there that's peaked peaked interest. Um, if so, please do just ping uh, your your local account manager um, at ESCA uh, and just 
you know, prompt the question really um whether it's you know sourcing you've got an rfp to run and you think go on then i'll i'll give this a go i've, I've got you know 775 dollars spare to to try and streamline my uh, my sourcing approach um then yeah just let speak to your account manager and and we will be very very glad to help um so please do bear that in mind well yeah thank you thank you nick for being our guest here today um if you have any questions or you're interested in learning more about Market Dojo or uh, Esker's relationship with them, you can find contact information in the show notes here. Um, and as always, if you're interested in learning more about Esker, you can find us at esker.com. Thanks for uh, tuning in today, and we'll, we'll talk to you next time.